Hi, Jeremy here, Modern Vitality. In today's video, chronic Lyme disease, how to avoid getting a divorce when you have chronic Lyme. We're gonna be looking at a pretty heavy topic. I'm gonna to approach it with some light and some levity, but this is serious. You know, I've seen so many people go through this process where they start to get sick, they get an illness, and then that illness takes so much away from them. It steals a lot. And sometimes it even steals our closest relationships. So I wanna offer you some perspectives and some ways to think about things and maybe some tools for your relationship and your communication so that you can reduce your chances of having people you know, go apart and maybe give yourself more of a, an opportunity to have close, strong relationships as you go through this healing process. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we're all adults here. I'm not a relationship counselor or a therapist. I'm just offering an expanded perspective based on patterns I've observed working with people with complex chronic health conditions, right? So hopefully I'm not giving you medical advice, right? This channel is not medical advice. You're just a responsible adult coming to learn new things. So I hope you take what you like and implement things and, and enhance your life that way. Now, secondly, before we get started too, I'm gonna to be talking about how people get when they get ill and how that can strain a relationship. You may want to have your spouse, your partner watching this video, okay? this I'm going to be speaking to both of you on this video, so that's important. And the third thing is, what else I've seen, is that actually we can start to get problems when people are, are healing and recovering. And there's a lot that the spouse has to understand to navigate that process too without getting... It's, a, it's so crazy. You, a marriage can survive the illness but not survive the healing, right? This is a paradox, but we'll get into that too in this video. I'm going to touch on that as well so that you're equipped with that. So first of all, you got to understand relationships work not because two people are static and a good match for each other, right? People need to be compatible and moving together. So if you think about a train station, right, and how two people can be on the same train going the same way, right, that they're traveling through life together, that's a great relationship. We need to be able to move and grow. Okay, but if you get to a point where you're you're going on two different trains that are like not compatible, that can be difficult to maintain. That can stress a relationship. So people shouldn't be, in my opinion, right? People shouldn't be fixed and static because it suits a relationship. A, a very dynamic and anti-fragile relationship allows room for growth of both partners. But because you've got strong communication and mutual respect and love for each other, you can handle sometimes that you grow apart a little bit, but it's okay because you know that you've got this glue, this cohesion that will bring you back together, right? That's why one partner can have these hobbies, right? That the other partner is not interested in whatsoever, but that's not a deal breaker, right? Because you can go spend your time, I don't know, collecting stamps or whatever it is, and, and the other partner can can just do their own thing, and then you you meet back up, right? You find all this commonality. What oftentimes happens with illness, right? Especially these kind of weird, complex, chronic inflammatory conditions, which are my specialty, right? And this is one of the reasons I really like these kinds of cases because it's incredibly satisfying to help people get through this, to get their life back because it can take so much. So when you help somebody get their life back, they re-expand and it's, it's so satisfying, right? With these conditions, they take so much. And what that can do is that can create a disconnection. Right? It starts to create new energetic dynamics within a relationship, meaning somebody may have gotten married, right? Two people get married and they're kind of young and nobody has any health issues. And there's all these expectations about what life's going to be like, even though when you get married, you say in sickness and in health, right? But nobody's really thinking about that, okay, until the reality sets in of what that means. So while you may have a life of adventure planned and your spouse may have this life of adventure planned, and then it turns out that one of you gets a complex chronic inflammatory condition and that just sucks all the fun basically out of all your plans, right? The person who gets the illness has to deal with the grief and all the other emotions around their shrinking world, right? That's, it's enough in your head. It's a lot to be like, man, I can't do, I can't go to restaurants. I can't travel. I can't be spontaneous. I can't have fun. I can't dance. I can't eat all these foods, like I can't take care of people like I like to, I can't show up, I can't even do my half of the housework, right? All that stuff is internal. And then you've got the other person now, there's a whole other second factor going on. The other person's watching all that and having an incomplete understanding of what's going on, right? Because we're not in each other's heads. So they may see that and they may see things like, oh, you know, my spouse, my partner, whatever, they don't do the chores anymore. Or 
They're no fun. They don't want to do anything anymore. They don't want to go dancing. They don't want to eat at restaurants. What's going on, right? And now we, we find these two identity narratives are starting to drift apart, right? Where there's where you want life to be and then where it actually is. And the bigger the disconnection between what we want, right, our desires and what we actually get, the bigger the gap there, the more the suffering. This is Buddhism 101, right? All suffering is from desire. The, the more the desire deviates from your current situation, the more suffering you're having. Okay, so that's all the peripheral stuff. I'm not even talking about the actual suffering of brain fog, fatigue, weird pains, insomnia, anxiety, no sex drive, right? Which that's a big one with relationships because, oh man, well, well let's just go into that now then while I'm on it. The, the partner can project on that too. If there's no sex drive, all of a sudden the weird voices come in the partner's head like, oh, maybe they're not interested in me anymore. Maybe I'm unattractive. Maybe they're seeing somebody else right? All this kind of weird self-talk can start to erupt when really what's going on is the person who has a complex chronic inflammatory condition has no sex drive because all their body's resources are directed towards immune function and not reproduction. Okay. I've got other videos on sex drive and libido that explain this in depth. If you want to go through that, like what are the four state, like how, how is all this working? Right. But in general, that's the deal. And it's very difficult for the partner or the spouse to not take that personally right? When really it has nothing to do with them in most cases. Of course, if there is an extramarital affair or something, I mean, I'm, you know, most times that's not what's going on. Most times it's, it's just strictly biology and the person is out of bandwidth. They don't have enough juice, right? To, to have that part going to, to have a strong libido. Okay. It's actually quite normal with the complex chronic inflammatory conditions, but nobody's talking about it, you know? So you're left kind of wondering, hmm, are they having an affair? Hmm, are they unattracted to me? right? And we get all these kind of weird dynamics. So the solution is to talk about it. The solution is to have open communication. The solution is to be able to have different types of strategies in your communication where you know that you can have a safe conversation, right? So there's so much to this, but I'll give you some, some things to think about. If, if the partner, the spouse is wondering about the sex drive, right? then the best thing to do is to already, before you have a sex conversation, is to have general conversations kind of defining the terms of how you're gonna to speak to each other, which I hope this video helps you do that, right? So you wanna be able to say, hey, there's something bothering me. I, I don't want you to take it personally, right? I just wanna know what's going on. I just wanna talk about it. And you start to diffuse some of the emotions around it. So you can create a safe container to have a conversation that's not triggering, right? And so. The spouse can say, hey, I've noticed we're not having sex much anymore. I, I don't know what's going on with that. Are you not interested in me? Or is this something about your health? Like, could you just help me understand? I'm just curious. Like, help me understand. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous it's about me and I just need to be like put at ease, right? That's a whole different deal of coming into the conversation that way versus instead of talking about it at all and just making like weird remarks, you know, offhand remarks that are hard to interpret, right? So you need to create a structure like, hey, this is a conversation I wanna have, it's important, I love you a lot, you matter to me, and I've noticed this part of our relationship is changing, what's going on with that, right? Is it the guy on YouTube said that you would have less sex drive because you're having inflammation? Is that is that all that's going on, right? Is what Jeremy said, is that it? Or is there something more, you know? <laughs> Use me if you want, right? Make me the, the scapegoat for that, that's fine, right? Start the conversation up. You wanna be able to talk about these things. You might be surprised what you discover about each other and about yourselves. And that process of talking and discovering will keep you from drifting apart. It keeps you closer. You're supporting each other. Okay, this is super important. So I talked about sex, but like that could be anything, you know? Oh, we used to go hiking a lot. You don't seem to want to go hiking anymore. Do you not like hiking anymore? Do you not like spending, you know, all day with me in a car and then hiking? Is it me? You know, what's going on here? Well, actually, I don't like hiking so much because I'm always afraid that if my energy crashes, that I'm, I'm going to be too far away from home and I'm going to just be like a zombie and I'm going to fall asleep on a rock somewhere, right? I'm just afraid of being too far from the bed radius, right? That's what happens a lot with these complex conditions where there's fatigue and all that. The world gets physically smaller. We get a, a smaller life radius because we want to be closer to the amenities of home in case we crash, right? That's something that happens. So these are all conversations you can have to diffuse the projection. It's the projection that's the problem, 
Okay, the spouse or the partner doesn't know what's going on, so they, they conjure the worst case scenario. We're not having sex anymore. Are you cheating on me? Right? You must be. Okay, this is all stuff that can be easily dispelled if you talk, if you communicate, if you connect about it. And especially if you try, try your best to not get upset and judge, right? Because that's what happens too is like, hey, I want to talk to you about something. I notice we're not having a lot of sex. Is it about me? And then the other person gets offended by that, right? Well, how dare you think that? Nope. Uh-uh. We keep we don't want to do second order and third order people getting upset, right? So one person can have a problem, the other one's got to be cool and help them with it. That's that's a pretty good rule to use, right? If somebody's upset, then it's the other person's job to be stable and calm, right? And then usually you'll take turns because then this one will go, oh, thanks for calming me down. Yeah, well, you know, oh, okay, I'll calm you down next, right? That helps. So having relationships and navigating that is a skill, okay? It's, it's a long time skill and it gets better with practice, but you have to practice with each other. These skills will help you navigate illness and what it takes from you, right? The other thing too is that then you'll start to get into these patterns. If you understand that the spouse with the complex illness doesn't have a lot of energy some days and can't do things, like physically cannot do the housework, do the dishes, cook the food, go to work, exercise, whatever it is, then the other person doesn't uh, come in and project on them or create any kind of story around it like, hey, you're lazy or hey, you're bad or hey, you're weak, right? That This is the tough one. Because the patterns we get are like, okay, well, you know, you can't do these things. So now I need to come in and be like the knight in shining armor. And I need to do all this stuff. I need to take care of you. Okay. Which is, it's fine and it's healthy and it's good and it's human. However, however, we want to never get stuck there. Okay. We want to be aware of this. We don't want it to become ingrained and become part of our story. Why? Why, Jeremy? Why can't I help? You can help. You should help. Definitely help right? It's the best thing to do. However, don't get attached to being a helper. Don't fasten an identity around this, okay? Because the only reason this person needs extra accommodation is because they have a complex chronic inflammatory condition. If that person goes through a four-stage process, immune, digestive, neuroadrenal, blood circulation, right? And they repair their body systematically, and now they don't have those symptoms. Now they don't need that help. So you need to be able to back off too, and let them get stronger and give them room to stretch their wings and room to challenge themselves as they heal. This is where people get messed up with the healing part. Remember in the beginning, I said people get divorced on the way down when things get bad. And then sometimes they make it through that just fine. And it's when the person starts healing and that's when the relationship just crumbles and falls apart. And one of the reasons why that happens is because over the time of being sick and ill, and this can be years, decades, right? You get ingrained in these patterns. And what happens is, as the person starts to heal and get better, the spouse hasn't caught up, hasn't adapted, that it's time to evolve their own self-narrative of who they are within that relationship. If they've been the helper for 10 years, 20 years, and all of a sudden that person doesn't need their help so much anymore, now there's incongruity. How that manifests is like agitation. I don't know who I am in this relationship. I used to get certainty and value and significance and all this and love from being a helper and taking care of you. Now you don't need me to take care of you so much. I don't know how to outgrow that. I don't know how to grow next. Well, it might've been so long that you forgot what it's like to just be you know, adventure buddies, right? Grow back into that. We need to find our, our human needs, our significance and our certainty. We need to find all that stuff and find our love and find our connection, not through a story dynamic that becomes outdated when one person starts to heal. That's how you move together. Just like with a kid, you know, hey, when you were a baby, I used to change your diapers. I used to take care of you. I used to carry you everywhere because you couldn't walk, right? And then your kid is like 16 and you don't look at your kid and go, well, I don't know who I am anymore because you won't let me put diapers on you. You won't let me carry you. You're 16. You want to drive a car, right? Of course, as a parent, you gr you grow with your child. You 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 update your relationship, right? So you're not always like just rocking your 16 year old to sleep. Go to sleep now, right? It doesn't work like that. It's crazy to think about that, right? How stunted, how weird of a relationship that would be, right? To keep babying your child who's growing up and getting more powerful and finding themselves, right? But it's the same thing, same energetics. I've got to take care of you. I've got to nurture you. I've got to do this for you because I know you can't because I know you're weak right now. That's fine when they're weak. But when the people get stronger in your life, you need to let them be stronger. You need to be okay with that. 
And don't worry about losing your identity, right? Just because you don't bottle feed the baby anymore doesn't mean you're not still a parent, right? And just because you don't do every single thing for your spouse who used to have a complex chronic inflammatory condition doesn't mean that you're not still a caring partner. The identity stuff is really what messes with people's heads. And the most important way to clear this is with communication. And I've given you a lot of things, a lot of words and a lot of tools and a lot of kind of metaphors and things where you can start to have these conversations with each other. Okay, it's important. It's important. And if you have a baseline of caring, respect, sense of humor, compassion, love, like all those things really help to nurture a landscape where you can have these kinds of conversations so that your marriage can survive. Right, so that something like a complex chronic illness, which is most people, one of their nightmares, right? It's a nightmare scenario and you're living it and you're gonna get through it and you're gonna be tougher for it and your relationship's gonna be stronger for it, right? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great if, if you became closer going through this journey together? It doesn't always happen, it doesn't always work. I've seen a lot of divorces, a lot, okay? Sometimes it's gonna happen. Sometimes it seems like there's nothing we can do, okay? But for those of you out there who wanna try these things, I would suggest, you know, open your mind up and come with the best of intentions, right? And always communicate and try not to project. The projection is a big one. These are the kind of conversations we have in our group too. Modern Vitality Solutions and Support. If you're dealing with a complex chronic inflammatory condition, have a support system, right? Have a spouse, have a partner. It's good to have people in your life that are there on your side. We also have a group of people who are going through exactly what you're going through. And we're international. we got people from all over the world going through the process, right? Working the system, getting their lives back. You can be here over my shoulder in our group. It's a free group. We're off big tech. We've got our own private chat group. We've got a vault full of uh, personalized videos that are interactive you can do so you can figure out where you're at in your healing process and get your all your pieces of the puzzle lined up and figure out what your next move should be. We've got a lot of resources, a lot of great people, very positive. Again, it's free. The application link is in the uh, description below this video. If I see your application and you look like a good fit for what we're doing, I'll get you in as soon as I can. I keep the group small and cozy so it does fill up, but hopefully I can get you in within the next monthly cohort. If not, you know, maybe two months, something like that. I hope it's not too long of a wait because I know you probably want to get in and get started sooner rather than later. And in the meantime, consider subscribing to this channel, right? Push the button. That teaches the algorithm to show you videos that actually matter to you, like this video, right? That help you get your health back which is probably one of the most important things you got going on right now. Take care of yourself so that you can really be there for other people fully, okay? It's really important. Hope this video helps you. Let's get you feeling better. Cheers.